What's going on there, guys? Good morning, good afternoon to those out there. Uh, it is the Earth Master here with my uh, co-host, Missy Mimis. How's it going, guys? Doing an update video here on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is uh, January 23rd, 2022, about 11.21 a.m. Uh, here along the West Coast. And activity kind of ramping up out here for sure along Northern California area. The uh, latest quake, though, a 4.7 out here in this area of the world. Let's go ahead and check out some movement here on the latest USGS map here. As you can see some activity up and down the northern California coastline. Uh, and more specifically up here, once again, around the Mendocino Triple Point Junction area. The uh, plate boundary here between the uh, North American Pacific and, in this case, the uh, Gorda Plate where these three kind of meet here, creating the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Quite a bit of movement here overnight. Uh, looking at at least a uh, 3.2 for the largest here. Majority of these earthquakes within the subduction zone at uh, <clears throat> looks like 16 to 25 kilometers below the surface, just south of Eureka. So some activity pretty uh, uh, rampant up there in the northern part of the state of California. 2.4 also up around the Forest Ranch area. It's up above the uh, Chico area, up in the mountains, above Paradise. 2.4 at 6.8 kilometers into the Sierra Nevadas. Also uh, quite a bit of movement still continuing into the Nevada area. Not necessarily along the uh, old fracture zone across this uh, Candelaria Hills area, but in its new swarming area over here to the northwest where we've seen that 4.3 kickoff yesterday we've seen about 43 earthquakes so far following that 4.3 originally came in as a 4.7 uh, this earthquake here definitely triggering up a whole bunch of aftershock sequences uh, in that region of nevada and the uh, depths of these earthquakes all over the place uh, roughly from about zero kilometers down to uh, some around 14 kilometers as far as the depth goes pretty crazy movement there in Nevada uh, into the Long Valley Super Volcano. A little bit of activity just to the southwest here of the Caldera uh, negative quake. Okay, some movement uh, in the microquake range also around the volcanic table end here to the east right around the Highway 6 area it looks like north of Bishop uh, down along the Ridgecrest area. Still just a little bit of spotty movement. Nothing significant like we had seen before uh, when it comes to just daily earthquake activity. So just a handful of quakes across this region and also uh, southwest of Bakersfield around the, uh, let's see, I can't remember which specific fault system's out there. I know there's another one that runs just to the east of this mountain range, but it doesn't show it here on the map. Uh, little, little smaller ones, Wheeler Ridge Fault Zone to the south, but not 100% certain that's taken place on that fault zone. But uh, nonetheless, some earthquake activity southwest of Bakersfield and a little bit of movement around the Garlock Fault structure there to the south. Uh, Southern California, not as active today as, uh, well, the past week or so. Loba movement along the San Jacinto Fault area and a little bit of swarming. I wouldn't say swarming. I would say microquake activity around the southern end of the Salton Sea couple two or a couple ones kicking off there uh, in that magnitude of the Salton Sea area. Imperial Fault Zone and a little bit of activity off the Brawley Seismic Zone it looks like here. A couple small microquakes. The Imperial Fault down south into the Gulf of California. Pretty quiet today at least according to the USGS. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, EMSC model. Uh, see if they're reporting anything below the 4.0 threshold that the USGS uses. And uh, I'll give it a second here. It takes them a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, time to load that map. North America region. You can see some activity. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're seeing a little bit of threes there into the Gulf of California region. A couple threes um, striking earlier this morning. It looks like. And also uh, up and down the Middle America Trench, a pretty good amount of threes kicking up there. Off the uh, coast of Mexico there. And also, uh, yeah, so these guys definitely show quite a bit of activity up and down the board when it comes to the North American and the uh, Pacific Plate area. 
Uh, getting back here to the USGS map, these guys not showing anything down there along the uh, Middle America Trench for some reason, but uh, it is what it is. They did have a 4.1 in that mix, but these guys aren't even showing it. Oh, wow. South America region, uh, pretty quiet for activity today. Um, Peru, Chile Trench, seen a little bit of movement, but nothing significant, nothing deep. And um, overall, it just seems to be focused up here on the northwest coast right now as far as the uh, pressure activity kind of ramping up. Did see some movement uh, kicking up here in the Tonga area once again around the volcanoes. And uh, right around the uh, Hunga Tonga volcano. Hunga Tonga sits right here in this little area. See if I can amplify it a little bit so you can see the islands. Or the, uh, the two separate islands there now. And some further movement to the south as well. We are looking at some activity ramping up here around the New Zealand area. I've seen that kick up on my uh, earthquake app that I have here on the phone. Just seen another one coming into the uh, New Zealand area. Let's see if we can get it picked up here. I believe it was this earthquake right here, 4.0, in in the uh, New Zealand area, just coming in. Uh, get this to key up a little bit. This is so slow. Some, uh, so there's a 4.0 coming in, southern part of New Zealand. And some threes kicking up here around the Hikurangi subduction zone, it looks like. Some further threes up and down the Kermadec Trench, not being reported by the USGS. And there's a reason why, because of the, uh, the threshold that they use at the 4.0 magnitude level but uh, definitely some activity ramping up here down uh, into new zealand and to the north here um, so watching that area pretty closely if you look at the south america region here even though usgs doesn't show it this this area is still seeing some activity as well in the three range upper threes and uh, some lower three magnitudes into the uh, peru chile trench really wish the usgs would use the uh uh, a little bit uh, on the uh, all magnitude side when it comes to international because you get a broader view of what's you know kind of what's happening and what's moving out here well they're not even <clears throat> reporting the 4.0 yet in the upper yet as yeah well. this one so. here just happened within the last hour so it might usgs might jump in there maybe we'll see <laughs> but yeah with the uh with that 4.1 there in the uh, middle america trench area Definitely not being reported um, from the USGS. See, at all, it's missing, yeah. missing in action. But uh, so that's kind of why we bounce back and forth between the uh, agencies here when it comes to uh, the earthquake reporting. But uh, pretty active over here along the uh, western part of the Philippine plate and through the Philippines. Uh, quite a bit of threes and whatnot kicking up all up and down this area. Uh, seen some movement up here north of the Japan area into the Japan Trench. Nothing significant. Still kind of watching this area for potential large-scale movement. The Aleutian Islands looks pretty quiet today um, up along that region of the trench. But uh, overall, far as 4.0 and above goes, uh, most of it has worked its way over here through the uh, Philippines. Where they had a four point, uh, where's this four point seven at? That's Carlsbad. way over here. Isn't that the one that just came in? That's right yeah. on the earthquake three D globe, Carlsberg. Carlsberg, yeah. Um, You're thinking of Carlsbad, California? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Along the uh, mid Indian Ridge, four point seven, and a whole bunch of activity working its way up here, around the Israel area, and uh, Jordan seen a little bit of movement as well yesterday, four point one. 4.7 looks to be the largest here in the sequence of earthquakes around the Greece area. Uh, nothing uh, west of here at the moment, but uh, I'm sure pressure is building up here in this region of the world. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, do, 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 jump over to the middle of the Pacific Plate here into the Big Island. This is the all magnitudes, and man, does this look pretty spotty. Not a whole lot of movement here in the Big Island along the southeast flank. Uh, just 24 earthquakes <clears throat> down there, about 30 to 35 kilometers for their for their uh, typical depth of the earthquakes here within this region. Nothing going on up there at Kilauea Volcano or Mauna Loa or Mauna Kea up north. All areas off to the coast here around the Lohi Sea Mount look pretty quiet as well uh, for now. But uh, things can definitely change in a blink of an eye. 
Puerto Rico area. All magnitudes have shown a little bit of movement around the Haiti area, 4.3, uh, kicking up uh, earlier today, and also some movement right around Puerto Rico. A couple microquakes. The uh, Puerto Rico trench looks pretty quiet southward through the uh, Dominica area. 4.6 coming into Alaska. 4.6 in Alaska right now, according to the, what is that, US, EMSC? The USGS, it should be coming through any second. It's weird how the USGS puts out, oh, there it is, 4.6. Just kicking up. We are just talking about how quiet it is, and here we go. Some activity kicking up around this region where we've seen that 6.2 kick up, right? Yep. Isn't that where we've seen it, that yep. 6.2? Let's uh, bring up the seven days. Yep, so some further aftershock sequences here within this area of that 6.2. Things kind of bounce around here pretty quickly on the uh, Pacific uh, Pacific plate. This thing's just pretty active. So we're looking at the last week of 4.5 and above. Uh, still looking for some action here along the Kurokamachaka Trench southward to about the Tokyo area where the Philippine plate here um, the plate boundary kind of meets. Uh, West Coast has remained relatively quiet when it comes to larger earthquake activity, but uh, again, overnight and this morning, we've seen that movement really kick up here into the southern end of the Cascadia. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet, except for a little microquake up here around the Leavenworth, Washington area, 1.3 kilometers. The tremor map from last night did show a little bit of movement along the Vancouver Island area. Uh, 18 epicenters of tremor at the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. All other areas look pretty quiet here uh, when it comes to that. Earthquakes Canada map. We'll go ahead and pull up this uh, latest info from the folks there at the Earthquakes Canada station. Maybe. There we go. And uh, not a whole lot of activity. Still looks like that one from uh, from a couple days ago up there in the Alaska area. So these folks are not reporting anything new taking place up in Canada, which is kind of odd. Uh, nothing going on at the northern end of the Cascadia when it comes to surface quakes either. So we'll see how that uh, amps up. See if that uh, continues on that path or not. The Yellowstone map here shows... For the most part, quiet activity. A couple microquakes here around the northwest corner of the park. Maple Creek area showing some movement overnight and this morning. Well-defined spikes kicking off at the Yellowstone area. And of course, I don't believe the USGS reporting uh, uh, too much of this activity on their map. In fact, nada. Zip zero being reported there by the USGS when it comes to the earthquake activity, obviously being uh, shown here on the live seismographs but hey it's a weekend right all right guys we're gonna jump off here uh we will provide of course updates throughout the day and uh, later this evening hope everyone's enjoying their weekend it's supposed to be close to 70 degrees again here in northern california so uh gonna go outside and get a little bit of uh, a little bit of sun rays you know, the sun's always good for your skin. Uh, not too much of it, of course, but uh, you do got to soak in some energy, mm -hmm. uh, some of that positive energy being built up out there from the sun. You can't be scared of the sun. That's one thing that kind of bugs me, people being scared of the sun. Right. Right? Plants thrive off of it. Life thrives off the sun. And uh, that's, man. Did we check solar weather? Speaking of the sun. Uh, yeah, we'll check out solar weather real quick here. I don't believe we got anything going. I was looking at the Aurora map, and it looks pretty quiet for the most part. Uh, it looks like just a little bit of elevated activity over the next couple nights. Um, other than that, things kind of mellowing out. Let's see what else we got here. Solar flares, look at that. Only a 10% chance of a sea flare. Nothing really popping there on the sun at all. Coronal holes, too tiny to uh, do any type of uh, uh, activity here to the earth. So entering into a pretty good quiet spell of uh, movement or uh, lack of solar activity. Solar activity is currently at very low levels. You can say that times 100. All right, guys, we're going to jump off here. Enjoy the day. We will be back a little bit later on this, after, or, uh, this evening. Uh, take care. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good night, guys. Or a good day, rather. Good night. <laughs> <clears throat>
I'm not really. I'm really not ready for bed yet. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. You never know. We do get quite a quite a few viewers on the. Uh, you know the. Uh, other side of the world. Yep. About to, bed, about to go to sleep. <laughs> about ready to go to bed. So good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace Stay out, safe, guys.